You know, one of the reasons we teach the word of God is to fortify the believer with the secrets of God. The Bible said to some, Ephesians 4 from verse 11, he gave to be apostles. To some he gave to be prophets. To some he gave to be evangelists. To some he gave to be pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints. And so the idea behind teaching is not just to speak, nor to quote scriptures. It's to open you up to the oracles of God. And the reason is because your insurance and your progress in life is tied to the secrets that you know and engage. The quality of your existence will be largely affected by what you know and what you engage. God is not biased. He does not favor one over the other. And so when you see disparities, unquestionable disparities in the lives of believers who all call upon the name of the Lord, you can now tell who knows what others don't know. And so teachings are designed to bring everyone up to speed, to understand spiritual realities, and to tap into the inheritances that are available to us as believers. In Deuteronomy 29 verse 29, it said, the secret things belong to God. It said, but the things that are revealed, it said they are revealed to us and to our children forever. And so God is in the business of revealing secrets because therein is the advantage of the believer. The Bible said, my people perish. Hosea 4 verse 6, or 6 verse 4, for the lack of knowledge. God is not denying his people, but if his people are disadvantaged, it's not because he doesn't want to help. It's because there is a gap in understanding. And in 2 Peter chapter 1 verse 3, he says, according as his divine power, he has given us all things that pertains to life and godliness. He has given it. He didn't say he will give it. He has given it. He said, but the degree to which you experience is tied to your knowledge. And so if a man lacks understanding, even though spiritual advantage is already there, he will still be a victim. And so tonight, the reason we are studying and will engage thanksgiving is because thanksgiving is one of the spiritual secrets that gives a believer advantage in life. Secrets are not for everybody. They are for those who seek. They are for those who desire them. And they are for those who will pay the price to get them. This is why not too many are champions. Because only few are willing to pay the price to apprehend secrets. And so tonight I'm trusting the Lord that in this short period of time, 10-15 minutes, God will show you a secret that you will not just know but engage. Because God is not committed to what you know. He's committed to what you do. He said, I the Lord, I the Lord, I shall perform the words of my servant and the counsels of my messengers. So what his servants know, do, are the things he performs. It's important for us to take these things as simple as they are because their power is not in how they appear. Their power is in the fact that they are rooted in the efficacious and eternal word of God. If you know these things and apply them, you will be shocked what will happen to you. Darkness is not a threat. Absence of light is the threat. A man who has light is glorified in darkness. He said the light shines in the darkness. The darkness comprehends it not. So the circumstances that are dwarfing people is not the problem. The problem is what you don't have. You don't have understanding. So when there is crisis, it's not the time for us to cry. It's actually the time for us to shine. Because the flood that destroyed people was the flood that exalted the ark of Noah. The difference is what he knew and did that others did not know. If you study the life of David, you'll be shocked. David was the one who gave us the most graphic illustration and graphic interpretation of the power of thanksgiving. He knew thanksgiving so much that his life became a mystery. I've taught you before about the Davidic anointing. David, as an individual, hosted seven dimensions of the anointing. How did this man become so powerful? They were the secrets that were available to him. And one of the secrets David revealed to us was the fact that he prioritized praise and thanksgiving above all else. 
If you study the life of David, you will see something shocking. In Psalm 119 verse 164, David said, seven times in a day, I will praise God. Seven times. And then the same guy shows up and begins to tell us in Psalm 55 verse 17. He said, I will praise God in the, I will pray at night, I will pray at noon, and I will pray in the morning. So, collectively, the intelligence of the psalmist is that praise more than you pray. I know it sounds strange to you, right? The man prays three times, but he praises seven times. Are you seeing why many people pray, but they are useless? Prayer is so important. I'm an advocate of prayer. In fact, the highest teachings you will find about me on the internet is on prayer. But there are secrets that you will find in prayer. One of such secrets is what David was teaching us here. The psalmist says, I pray three times, but I pray seven times. No wonder they were invincible. And I'm saying David because the psalmist spirit flowed through everyone that wrote the psalm. Pray three times, pray seven times. You now wonder why these men were more than conquerors. You now wonder why these men were invincible fortresses. Because they knew what to do. And the reason this is so is because praise is actually the most unselfish type of prayer. The only kind of prayer you pray that does not have any element of selfishness in it is praise. It's thanksgiving. Even when you are interceding, you are interceding for somebody that is connected to you. When you are interceding, you are interceding for someone else. The only thing you do that is only about God is when you thank God, either through praise or worship. This is why David became such a spectacle for his generation because he knew the mystery of thanksgiving. The crisis of many believers is that they fail to give thanks and they fail to praise. And so they are running from one prophet and one apostle to pray for them they are going to different mountains to pray, which are all very good. But in addition to that act or that activity you are doing, make sure that thanksgiving predefines every other thing you are doing. If a man cannot thank God, he is not open to wonders. What makes a man a wonder is the extent of his thanksgiving. The psalmist knew it, he epitomized it, and his life shows it. He gave us an, an access, open ticket to his life. I pray three times in a day, but I pray seven times in a day. No wonder he was such an unexplainable phenomenon in his generation. Bishop David Odeko said something. He said, if you pray, <laughs> God answers if he hears. <laughs> Hope you know it's not every prayer God hears. He say you pray and God answers not because you pray and miss. You pray to lavish it on your selfishness. So God will answer your prayer if he hears. God will answer your prayer if you pray in faith. But he said when you praise, God comes down. The only thing you do that God does not put any law around its operation is thanksgiving. No matter how you thank God, God will hear and God will accept if you thank him lying down, he will hear. If you thank him dancing, he will hear. If you thank him jumping, he will hear. But there are ways you pray, God will not hear. And so thanksgiving is a superior insurance to prayer. Because your prayer is answered if God hears, not if you pray. But your thanksgiving, the moment you begin, God comes down. God is not only hearing you, he comes down. He said God inhabits the praises of his people. Why you pray, you pray to God. When you praise, God comes to you. You see the mystery behind this phenomenon. But many believers never do it. If you ask them, when do you thank God? They only thank God when church organizes Thanksgiving service. What we are doing here is beyond a service. It's a lifestyle. Thanksgiving is supposed to become your lifestyle. Because every engagement of a believer is not meant to be an activity occasioned by a ceremony. Is supposed to be a lifestyle. And if a man will make thanksgiving his or her lifestyle, then wonders will become the reality of that man. And so tonight, very quickly, I want to show you the wonders of thanksgiving. 
But because I don't have time, I will just outline one thing. One out of the many things I would have shared. Tonight is not a revival service, so calm down. I have only 15 minutes. I can't go far and say some things. Or I say, let's just explain this. Pick it and go and apply it. My goal for you in this teaching is for you to apply it. So I want to simply explain and then we'll move forward. So people are used to fire now. Any day we don't pierce high. They are waiting there. Tonight is to hear and apply. Are we together? Praise God. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 18, the Bible said, In everything give thanks. It said, this is the will of God for you in Christ Jesus. In everything give thanks. Why is that so? Because the wondrous life of a believer is tied to his thanksgiving. You will never accomplish in God until thanksgiving becomes your lifestyle. How does thanksgiving provoke wonder? There are many things I would have shared, but we don't have time. And so I will just limit it. The reason thanksgiving is a key to wonders or activating wonders is because thanksgiving evokes the presence of God. The moment a people begin to thank God, the presence of God is released instantly. One of the most potent tools in the spirit for activating the presence of God is an instrument called thanksgiving. Where people thank God, there the presence of God dwells. He said, God inhabits the praises of his people. God inhabits the praises of his people. And the good news about the presence of God is, the moment the presence of God is activated, the power of God goes to work. If you study Psalm 99 verse 2, Psalm 100 verse 2, you will see that the Bible says clearly that through praise we come into his presence. So praise brings God's presence. But the presence of God is the key to wonders. In Acts chapter 10 verse 38, it says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. Who went about doing good? Why? Not because he went to a Bible school. Why? Not because he was connected to somebody. Why? Not because he was Jesus. He said because God was with him. And so anybody God is with is a worker of signs. Is a worker of wonders. We can tell you, especially those of us who travel, that many times we see God do mighty things. Our faith level is zero. I've gone for meetings before where I didn't even have a word for the people. I come to the altar, I'm praising and worshipping God. They think I am loving God. I'm actually stranded. There's no word in my spirit. And I'm trusting God, just give me one scripture. Let me just start something. And while I am here talking, I'm praising. Sometimes a scripture comes, sometimes no scripture comes. And I begin to talk to the people waiting for God. The moment the presence of God is quickened, even though my faith level is zero, wonders begin to happen. Last month, we were in the city of Joss. I came into that city exhausted because I had done back to back for many weeks. In fact, I had to drive to Lagos to, to fly from, from Ibadan to Lagos to fly to Joss. And I landed Joss that evening. I had to preach. I came up, the sound system was not good. Everything was working against me. And to make things worse, my nose was blocked. I was trusting God to clear the Qatar first. I carried the microphone as I started introducing and welcoming the guest. My voice left. Sometimes I would cough while talking. I didn't have one faith. In fact, it was on the altar there. I trusted God. What should I say? God just quickened in my heart the parable of the prodigal son. I quickly went to the scripture and I explained the parable. When I finished, I did an altar call. And prayed for the sick. Only for me to hear testimony. A woman showed up and said she had goiter. Goiter had vanished. Goi what? A goiter vanished. Under this condition of faithlessness and weakness. The presence of God was there. When the presence of God comes. Your faith can be excused. When the presence of God comes. Everything you know. May not be available. But it will still be enough. 
He said, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. Who went about doing good? Not because he was anointed, because God was with him. He gave us the reason why. In Mark 16 verse 20, he said the disciples went out. And he said, the Lord walking with them, confirming the word with signs and wonders. The wonders didn't happen because they were disciples of Jesus. The wonders happened because God was walking with them. The moment the presence of God becomes your abode, the power for signs and wonders are activated. Many are struggling with things and they are not seeing them done because of the scarcity of the presence of God. But one of the ways to activate the presence of God is to sustain a disposition of praise and thanksgiving. This is why the wise men are always joyful and they are always praising and thanking God because they know the secrets. Have you not seen and noticed that where wonders happen, they are always excited praising God? Some people think the presence of God increases on your life when you carry a frown. <laughs> That is parasitism. They are walking like this. And headache will not be healed. Those who are poor remain poor. Nothing happens. In fact, they frown their way into depression. But when you find a man who is always full of God's presence, before you know what's happening, his hands are up. And then he said, the lifting up of our hands is as the evening sacrifice. Before you know what is happening, thank you, Jesus. Before you know what is happening, he's already breaking into a song. As he keeps praising God, as he keeps thanking God, the impact of that thanksgiving is not just excitement. It's that the cloud begins to descend upon him. Many areas of your life where you need wonder, you are not seeing them because you have not carried praise. You have not carried thanksgiving there. We don't thank God because of what he did. We thank God for what he does. Because what he does includes what he did, what he is doing, and what he will do. That's why even when the answer is not coming, we still thank God. Even when the principle doesn't work, we still thank God. Because thanksgiving is what brings God into the boat. And if God is in your boat, anytime he wakes up, the, the storm will come. The problem you will have in life is when the presence of God is not there. And so thanksgiving is a key to wonders because... Thanksgiving is what activates the presence of God in a man's life. It's not a church thing. It's a life thing. When you go into your office, go with thanksgiving. When you go into your family, go with thanksgiving. Anywhere you want the presence of God to abide, take thanksgiving there. It's an activator of the presence of God. Many lack the presence of God. Sometimes that's why their faith don't work. Sometimes that's why the principles don't work. Sometimes that's why the prayer don't work because the presence of God is lacking. If you want to always walk under an atmosphere of the miraculous, your mouth must be full of thanksgiving. I have followed men that make impact and have made it consistently for a long time. One thing I can tell you about all of them is that praise is not lacking in their mouth. Every time and anywhere you meet them, they are always giving thanks to God. They are always full of excitement. They are always praising God. In fact, you hear Bishop Oedepo say things like, everything that didn't work, I made it not to work. Everything that worked, God made it work. You hear Bishop Oedepo say things like, if you lost anything, it's because of God that you didn't lose everything. They always have a way of giving glory to God because they know the key. And they keep doing things that themselves cannot explain because they know that the power is in the presence of God. And what keeps the presence of God perpetually is thanksgiving. Many times when I want to see the hand of God, the easiest way I activate it is through praise and thanksgiving. Forget the matter and start praising God. You will be shocked how God will come through. Did you not read the story of Jehoshaphat? Three nations ganged up against him. Moab, Ammon, and Mount Seir. The army of Jehoshaphat was not even up to one third of the armies that were coming against him. They went to the place of prayer and God said, thank you for praying, but go with thanksgiving. And as they started praising God, he said they turned against themselves and destroyed themselves. The last man standing also killed himself. Because it was not about the enemy, it was about a mystery that was activated. And so even though there was nobody to fight, the guy had to fight himself. And Jehoshaphat and his men 
came to take the spoil. A life of wonder is a life of thanksgiving. If your mouth is dry, your life will be dry. If there's no thanksgiving in your life, there will be no wonder in your life. You will only think it, imagine it, wish it. It will never happen. I'm telling you, even those who pray, they know that the final trigger they always release is thanksgiving. Because it is in thanksgiving you submit and surrender to God. You will tell him you have done everything. Now do what only you can do. That's what thanksgiving means in the presence of God. And so in order to help somebody understand what thanksgiving is, let me quickly give you four definitions just to make the teaching a bit applicable. Thanksgiving is number one, a testimony of our gratitude for what God does. And I say what God does includes what he did, what he's doing, and what he will do. And so every time you are thanking God, it's a testament that you are grateful. A man who cannot thank God is an ungrateful man. And when God sees an ungrateful man, that man is no longer qualified for the blessings of God. Because everybody requires gratitude to give more. And God is not different. And so you find a man of gratitude, you find a man of thanksgiving. You find a man who struggles with thanksgiving, that's a man full of ingratitude. In Luke 17 from verse 17 to 19, after Jesus healed the ten lepers, only one came back. Jesus asked him, where are the nine? That means God expects gratitude. And so every time we thank God is a testimony of gratitude. You need to see the disposition of believers when they have need and then compare that disposition with when the need is answered. When a man is in need, all this attention, all this focus, all this commitment is on God. The moment God answers, suddenly prayer becomes too long. The road to church becomes too far. Suddenly church starts closing date. But when he needed the child, all of that was not a factor. The moment the child came, suddenly everything becomes difficult. And so God is not only interested in what you do before you receive the answer. What you do before you receive the answer is called faith. What you do after you receive the answer is called gratitude. Both of them are important. And the reason you will keep seeing is not just about what you do before you receive. The reason you will keep seeing is about what you do after you have received. If you pray to God for a breakthrough and he gives you a job, he will wait to see what you will do. What you will do after you get the job is what will now determine the next phase of breakthrough you will receive. You will repeat what you did before you got the job. If what you did after you got the job is wrong, even if you repeat what you did before you got your job, it will not work again. Are you seeing why somebody lays hands on the blind eye? It opens. He forgets to thank God. The next day he comes and lays the same hands on another blind eye. It no longer opens. So it's not just about the faith to engage. It's also about the gratitude after engagement. Because the gratitude after engagement is the precursor and the validator of the faith for the next requirement. If you lack gratitude, you will lack consistency in the faithfulness of God. And so thanksgiving is a testimony of gratitude. Number two, thanksgiving is an acknowledgement that God is supreme and almighty. The reason many people fail to thank God is because somewhere in their mind, they think it's their competence that made it happen. I can tell you today that my brothers who were kidnapped will thank God differently today than they did last month. <laughs> you, don't, you don't understand. Do you know why? Everything that needs to be done was done. All the security forces, all the connections, even the governor of the state was called. The commissioner called. Top DSS officials called. Nobody did anything to date. And so now, at least they know that to sleep on your bed and wake up is what Thanksgiving. <laughs> if you go home and you are able to come home, you will know it, it, it demands Thanksgiving. You will just discover suddenly that your bed is a paradise. Even if your bed is like a mat. It's not about the size of the bed. That you are secured in the first place. Demands thanksgiving. If, we, if when they called the governor, something happened. They wouldn't have thanked God. They would say, okay, they had connection. When you call everybody you know and nothing happens. Anytime, whenever, you, when you come again to thank God. Your thanksgiving will have a deeper meaning. And so when people genuinely thank God. They are acknowledging God as the source 
and the one who gave the answer to the crisis of life. And when people can't thank God, it means they have another God apart from the supreme God. Their God may be their certificate. Their God may be their human connection. Their God may be their competence because people have many gods. Thanksgiving is what reveals who your God really is. Because as I am now, I cannot say what we are doing is working because we are smart. How dare you? Smart? You know the spirits involved? You know the men hoping for you to fail? You think you are smart? That's why ministry is working. You think you are smart? That's why you are being promoted on your job. You think you are smart? That's why the business is working. Wait for God to remove his finger. And you will see the futility of human wisdom. Wait for God to remove himself from the equation. And you will see the futility of human ability. How dare you think it's because you are intelligent. That's why it's working. It's an affront and an assault against the name of God. Every time we thank God, it's an acknowledgement. That he and he alone is the worker. He said, without me, you can do nothing. It's not an exaggerated statement. It's a fact. Without me, you can do nothing. That's what Jesus said. Paul said, I planted Apollos water. He said, but God gave the increase. If God does not give the increase, both the planting and the watering will be in vain. And so thanksgiving is an acknowledgement that God is the almighty. He is the one working it out. And when a man refuses to thank God, it's an unconscious declaration that God, thank God you are God, but you are not the one moving my life forward. I know you are God, but this particular success is tied to my intelligence. It's tied to human connection. When you find a man who genuinely thanks God, that's a man who knows that intelligence is futile without God. It's an acknowledgement. This is why we do it consciously and deliberately. Because we are acknowledging God again and again that if it were not for him, this would not have worked. Number three, thanksgiving is a testimony of our trust in God that if he did it before, he will do it again. It's a testimony that our confidence is in God. That we are sure tomorrow holds something good, not because of what we are planning, but because of what he will do. Because we've seen what he has done before. So every time you see people thanking God, it's a testimony of faith. Faith in God as their source and the only one to whom and upon whom they depend. And finally, thanksgiving is a strategy of the spirit of keeping God in the equation. The moment you stop thanking God, the presence of God begins to vaporize. It's a jealous God. And so if you want to keep God always, you will make thanksgiving a part and parcel of your life. Because what keeps God there is not just your prayer. God can answer your prayer from heaven. God can answer your prayer through an angel. God can answer your prayer through another man. But if you want God to remain with you, you must make thanksgiving a lifestyle. So the divine strategy for keeping divine presence is a technology in the spirit called thanksgiving. And so every time a man is thanking God, he's making a statement in the spirit. When I go out tomorrow, I need God to go with me. When I go to the office, I need God to go with me. And the only way I can get God to go with me is to thank him and acknowledge him for what he has done. So thanksgiving is not a religious activity. It's actually a product and an expression of spiritual intelligence. That first of all, we acknowledge God as our source. Secondly, we, are, we, we declare our trust and our confidence to be in God and God alone. Thirdly, is a declaration that is the doer and finally is a strategy of keeping God in and always within the context of the equation and our environment. How do you thank God? Number one, you thank God by praising Him. There's a difference between praise and worship. And I need to explain it today so that as we engage, you will understand it. Some people think praise is to sing loud and dance. Why worship is to sing calmly, sing calmly and sustain decorum. That's not what it means. So when they say let's praise, they start dancing. When they now say worship, they change the tune. And they begin to sing slow and calm songs. That's not what it means. Praise is an act of acknowledging God for what he has done or for what he is doing or for what he will do. Why worship 
is an act of acknowledging God for who he is. This is why worship is superior to praise. You praise God because of his actions and his acts. But you worship God because of who he is. So you stop praising God when God stops acting. But even if God does nothing, you will keep praising him. Because he doesn't need to do anything for you to honor him. So when you get to that point, it means you know God for who he is. And so how do you thank God? You thank God, number one, by praising God. And for you to effectively praise God, there are two things you must know. Praising God is not to sing and dance. Dancing and singing can be a hobby. There are many people singing high songs. They are not praising God. That song just appealed to them. So that you are singing a song that appeals to you does not mean you are praising God. That is not praise. You are God. You are not just Bigo. You love the song. That's why you are singing it. And you are dancing because the rhythm synchronizes with your soul. You can sing a song, dance, and not praise God. Two things that must happen before you praise God is number one, you must thoroughly sit down and think and acknowledge what God has done. That's why in Psalm 103 from verse 1 to 20, the Bible was recounting everything God has done. Go and read it at home, I don't have time. And so when a man is praising God, he's not just dancing and singing a song. He's actually counting everything God has done and believing God for other things and acknowledging him to be able to do it. And so when we start dancing here and singing songs, you may need to cast your mind back and find out where he delivered you. You may need to cast your mind back and find out when you were stranded and God came through for you. You may need to cast your mind back and check that time you didn't know what to do and yet God showed up. It is when you begin to consciously acknowledge God for what he has done that praises begin. If you don't do that, you may dance to a good song and go home. You didn't praise God. This is why many times people who say they praise God, when they have to praise God with their substance, they can't. Because they are just excited and they are singing a song they know and dancing because dancing is their hobby. But a man who has acknowledged what God has done for him, nothing becomes too big to praise God with. Because he's not praising God because the song is on. He's praising God because he's testifying to what the Lord has done for him. And so the first way you praise God is when you identify what he has done and you are thanking him for it. Or it's when you believe him for something and you are thanking him because you know that it's already done. That's when you are praising God. If you cannot acknowledge, identify anything God has done, even if you sing and dance, you didn't praise God. I'm saying this now so somebody will cast his mind back. When we start dancing, don't just dance because you know the song. There should be something you tender consciously and say, Lord, how would I have paid my school fees if not for you? Lord, how would I have been preserved when I traveled that journey if not for you? Lord, how would this business have worked if not for you? That's what praise is. You identify what God has done and you are thanking him for it or you put your faith in God for something and you believe he will do it and so you are thanking him for it. That's the first thing that makes it possible for a man to praise God. The second thing that makes praise possible is to acknowledge. You know, I'm saying these things and reiterating them in different form because it needs to become your consciousness. Is to acknowledge consciously, Lord, I know I read, but I didn't pass the exam just because I read. Lord, I know I signed the contract. I know I sent some money, but it didn't work because I did all of that. Because even the things I did, you were the one who empowered me to do it. Because the Bible said, God is able to do according to what we ask and think. So everything we are asking and thinking, God is the one doing it. And he said, it's according to the power at work on our inside. Now, that power at work, who put it there? It's God that put it there. So our acknowledgement that even though we participated, we didn't do it, he did it, is the act of thanksgiving. 
if you know these two things, you can praise God. If you don't know these two things, you are just a good dancer. You are just a good singer. You may even be the one leading it, but you are not worshiping, praising God. And if you are not praising God, you are not thanking God. The second way to thank God is to worship Him. And I've explained it already. That worship is acknowledging God for who He is. Do you see why before you do these two things, you have to think first. A lot of people think Christianity is a mindless move. You just come jump, sing. They think Christianity is something that cuts out of your mind, exonerates your mind, and you are just doing things. When you ask them, they say, Spirit, Spirit. You can't worship God until you acknowledge Him. And you can't acknowledge God until you know Him. In Psalm 107, verse 1, it said, Praise ye the name of the Lord, for He is good. That's how you praise God. That means you are acknowledging that God is good. So when you lift your hands towards heaven, you are lifting your hand to a God that is good. That understanding that provoked this response is what made what you are doing a worship. Did you notice that when the elders were falling on their faces and worshiping God, they were stating why they were doing what they were doing. They said, holy, holy, holy is the Lord. We are not just falling on the ground. Today, when you say worship God, some people will just lie down. When they lie down, they doze off. <laughs> because they feel that disposition is the disposition of worship. When you, are, when you lift a sorrowful song, they will just, oh God, and they will lie down. In fact, as they are lying down, they, 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 they are perceiving that people are seeing that and feeling that they are lying down. I was there. I laid down one period and I was thinking that, oh, People are seeing that I'm lying down. I just stood up and said, Lord, I'm sorry. <laughs> it is the revelation of God that hits you, that provokes that action. There's a revelation of God that will hit you, you start crying. That tears now becomes worship. There's a revelation of God that will hit you, you just lift up your hand and surrender. There's a revelation of God that will hit you, you will fall on the ground. It is that revelation that provokes worship. If that revelation is not there, everything you are doing is a religious activity. This is why you must have to know God to be able to worship him. In 1 Samuel chapter 2 verse 1, when Hannah was worshiping God, she wasn't, she wasn't worshiping God just by talking. She was worshiping God by acknowledging who God was. He said, my horn is exalted. He said, my mouth is enlarged over my enemies. And she went further to say, there, was no, there is none holy as the Lord. There is none holy. Because of that revelation alone, Hannah can lie on the floor and roll from one side to the other for the whole night because she has acknowledged that of all the holy creatures, there is none holy as the Lord. There are angels that are holy because they are separated unto God. There are angels that are as brilliant as God. But he said, among all the holy creatures of heaven, there is no one like God. That act and that acknowledgement of who God is, that's what makes worship possible. And so when a man wants to worship, he needs to first of all go back and ask himself, who is God to me? It is your revelation of God that provokes worship. And so when we come to give God thanks, the second way we give God thanks is by worshiping him. That means before we showed up, we've had a conclusion by thinking through by the Holy Spirit who God is to us. And that conclusion we come to is what now informs everything we are doing. There's a conclusion about God you will enter. You will know that God is your supplier. You will just know. And when you know that God is your supplier, you will know that land is because of God. That house is because of God. That car is because of God. And you know that that thing you are trusting for is still going to be because of God. When you now look at your life, and see where you are, you will need help. Because you have acknowledged that it's not your hand that brought this to you. Do you know what will happen if a billionaire comes to a point of acknowledging that God is a supplier? When he sees the magnitude of wealth he possesses, that wealth will not provoke pride, it will now provoke humility. Because he has a revelation of God that now defines the money. But if he doesn't have a revelation of God, he can spend that money one tumbly because he would think his hand got it, so it will be pleasure. 
So the difference between two persons that have money is who God is to them. The difference between two bankers is who God is to them. The difference between two preachers is who God is to them. There are many preachers that think they are succeeding because they are gifted. They have utterance. They work miracles. There are many preachers that are succeeding that think they are succeeding because they, they, they are skillful. They have excellence. They can plan things. Such preachers can never worship God. Because even if they are calling God Ebenezer, in their mind, they know it's their skill that brought it. And so before you worship God, before they act, there must first of all be a consciousness. A consciousness that is a product of your revelation of God. This is why thanksgiving is not something you just do by bringing 10,000 to the altar. Thanksgiving is not just something you do by bringing a goat to church. You may bring a goat because you have many goats. And so you just lose one and carry it to church. I have 10 goats. Let me just take one to church. Everybody, what will I take to the altar? Thanksgiving is not just about transfers or writing a check. Before you write that check, who is God to you? You will come to a point where you say, the reason I'm healthy is not because of hygiene. It's because of God. And so when you are worshipping God, you are not worshipping what every other person is worshipping. You are worshipping God, the supplier of divine health. When another person is worshipping God, he is worshipping God, the protector. When another person is worshipping God, he is worshipping God, the giver. Because our revelations are different. It is in the place of worship that the diversity of God is revealed. This is why we cannot but worship God. Every time we start worshiping God, all of us start calling him a different name. Imagine what worship will look like in heaven. Because when Abraham begins to worship, what you will see is El Shaddai. When Moses begins to worship, what you see is Jehovah. And everyone who worships will reveal another dimension. And so the assembly of worship becomes a prison that reveals the totality of the dimensions of God. So worshipers are actually revelators of God. A man can't worship God until he has known him. He said there is none holy as the Lord. If you were to worship now, what will you call him? Before you bring the money, before you bring the goat, before you bring the apple, before you bring the watermelon, what will you call him? Because if you don't know what to call him, that thing you brought is a ritual. If you don't know what to call him, that crying, that lying down, is a ritual, it's religious. And religion can become emotional. That is emotional does not mean it's powerful. But when you find a man who has a revelation of God, he won't even worship God in church alone. Everywhere he is, he's overwhelmed. He's overwhelmed. And that's why many times, it will take a circumstance for a worshiper to be born. Find out many who worship God genuinely. It's a circumstance. If you ask my brothers who are kidnapped now, if they tell you that God is protector, they know what they are saying. Don't make the mistake of thinking you know what they are talking about. Because you have not sat with kidnappers in the forest for 48 hours. If you sit there and you come out, if you say God is faithful, what you are saying, it will echo the foundations of heaven. Because you are talking from the place of experience. You are talking from the place of an encounter. You are talking from the place of an intercourse that you have had with God. And so anything you call God will not be what you read in a book. It will be who you know him to be. And so when, you, when such things begin to rise, then God can reveal that dimension. Thanksgiving is a deep reality. It is beyond the religious activity. It's a testimony of how much of God we know and how much we are willing to acknowledge him for who we think he is. The third way to thank God is by presenting your gifts. So you begin from praise. You get to worship before you come to gifts. It's better you praise and worship and not bring gift than to bring a gift and not praise and worship. Because your gift is validated by the revelation of your praise and worship. A man can bring ten naira to God and he will thank him more than a man who, bring a, who brings a billion. Because the other one will just bring it maybe out of show and pride. Or he will bring it out of the abundance that he has. Or he will bring it just because church is doing it and he feels like helping church. Because he thinks he can help church. But there's another who is bringing it because he knows God is faithful. And he has checked there's nothing else to honor God with but this little.
And so when that person puts that thing on the altar, it's like Isaac. That's why Jesus saw the poor widow and said she gave more than them all. Because that is all she has. Go and tell the rich man to bring all he has. <laughs> he can never do it. He can never attempt it and he will never think about it. The third way to thank God is with your substance. Many people are doing these things every day, but they are doing it religiously. They don't know it. Do you know before you come for a Thanksgiving service, you were supposed to sit down at home first and count your blessings and name them one by one? How can you praise him if you have not even acknowledged what he has done? How can you worship him if you have not even acknowledged him? You just throw to church. That's why we can't see this power. I told you if you thank God correctly, the presence of God will come on you. You will travel with God's presence. You will know that you have it. And so when you praise, when you worship, then you now thank with your substance. In Proverbs 3 verse 9, it says, Honor the Lord with your substance. And with the first foot of thy increase. One of the ways a spirit acknowledges that you are grateful. It is by the things you present. That's why I say, let no one appear before the Lord empty. It's not about the law. Because where a man's treasure is, that's where his heart is. And so when God wants to vet your degree of gratitude, he wants to see what you have presented. He said, when you go to present a gift to your governor, will you give him a blind goat? That means God is conscious of what you bring. He's not talking about the volume, but he's talking about the heart with which you brought it. This is why in olden times, when men come to thank God, they carry what they have and what they do and bring it. Because they are saying, you blessed us with this. We are bringing it to thank you. So if you come for a thanksgiving service, men are supposed to present precious gifts to God. In Philippians chapter 4, from verse 17 to 19, Paul was speaking. And Paul said, I didn't desire you to present these gifts because I need them. He said, I asked you to do it because it will be credited into your account. So when a man brings precious things to God, God is mindful. And God is not just mindful. God has a way of recompensing that man. And that's why in verse 19 he said, my God shall supply all your need. That scripture is not for everybody. You can quote it, you will not see it. That scripture is for those who acknowledge and honor God with their substance. Because Thanksgiving is not just a place you come to give anything. It's a place you come to show gratitude. If you were to see the man who gave you money to start business, now you are a billionaire, and you go to see that man to say thank you, will you come to him the way you come to church? Because you acknowledge that you are a billionaire today because of him. You have not acknowledged God. That's why you stroll to church casually to thank God. If you have truly got the revelation that God is your source and you know who he is, every time you have the opportunity to thank him, you will prepare for it. Those of you who took time to specially dress well to come, God bless you. It's a sign that you know it. And those of you who came at all, God bless you. Because I know most people today are going to watch mercy. Because today is what called finance. Some of us have been delivered from that body. I was telling them, I said, you can watch football as a spiritual man, but don't be a fan. A spiritual man cannot be a fan. The commitment requirement is too much. 38 matches in one season, and then you are building momentum to win a league. From league, you are winning the... Ah, when will you watch at the gate? Imagine if I was a football fan now and then I would sit down to watch and be praying for Messi because I actually want Messi to win. <laughs> I love him. I love his, his hard posture. He's a humble player and he's very gifted. I want him to win. In fact, I saw a vision. Now the World Cup is over so nobody will say, Mike, say he's the Messi won. I saw a vision that he won and I told my friend that he's a liar. It's my, it's my, it's my feeling. Because when you desire something so much, it becomes a vision. <laughs> it's not God that spoke to me. I desired for him to win so much that I started seeing it. And I hoped that he won. 
but I'm not a fan. And so from morning till now, till this evening, I was praying in my room. I don't have that, that luxury. <laughs> Imagine if I went to watch and then I'm running to catch the service. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And so if you acknowledge that God is your source, it will affect what you present to God. And so a man who truly understands thanksgiving and knows how to thank God, it will show in the quality of what he presents. And finally, how do you thank God? You thank God through service. In 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 20, he says, your body is not your own. He says, you were bought with a price. And so when God wants to see that gratitude, he sees it in the degree that you present yourself in service. You become God's sacrifice. Romans 12 from verse 1 to 3. I beseech you dearly beloved that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice. Holy and acceptable unto God for that is your reasonable offering. Thanksgiving begins with praising God which is acknowledging what he does and what he does includes what he has done, what he's doing and what he will do. And then it moves into worshipping God which is acknowledging God for who he is. And then he migrates into what you give because you honor him if you have acknowledged him. And then finally, it comes to not just giving your gifts, but presenting yourself. And you become God's instrument. You may not be called into the fivefold ministry, but in your office, you will serve God. In the house of God, you will serve God. Anywhere you are, you will first of all represent God before you represent anyone. This is how to thank God. Unfortunately, in this service, we are not able to do the last one because the last one takes a lifetime. But at least, the first three we are able to do. And so in the next one minute or two minutes, or two minutes, why not think and check your heart and find out sincerely the things God has done for you and how he has helped you. Because some of us, we have even forgotten what God did. When we're looking for that job, we knew we're not, we're not qualified. God gave it to us. When we're looking for that visa, we knew it was not possible. God gave us. Now we are enjoying and we are forgotten. When we're looking for that child, we knew it was not possible. God gave us. But how quick we are to forget. You have to bring everything you can remember back to your consciousness now and begin to thank him for it. This is not a ritual. This is gratitude. Father, thank you. There are many, many, many more you will not be able to remember. But at least the ones you can remember, thank him for it. And so when we start dancing, that is what will inform the kind of dance you will dance. The kind of dance you will dance, you won't dance it because you copied it from somebody. Because nowadays, when you see people dancing, they are not dancing out of gratitude. They are dancing out of copying what they copied from people they love. That is beautiful. But there is something that will activate something in you deeper than what you copied. Because that person you copied for, the reason is original is because of something he touched. Some people can't even thank God. They can't dance. They are big men. When you are saying, when you are thanking God and they are praising God, they are doing like this. Some are doing like this. Once in a while, they do like this. Then they put their hands on their chest. God is good. God is good. You don't know how many accidents you have escaped. Maybe when, when God wants to help you, he will show you how many. Because last week alone, maybe you escaped three. But the angels didn't even let it happen. You thought you were a good driver. You manipulated the trailer. <laughs> You want to thank him? Thank you for life. Thank you for rest. Thank you for health. Thank you for favor. Thank you for peace of mind. Thank you for mercy. Mercies that have made us accepted. People support you. People love you. People encourage you. People rise up to fight in your defense. It's not because you are special. It's the mercy of God. You want to thank him for something? He says, for the lost mercy that we are not consumed. It's for his mercies that we are not consumed. That means 
every one of us is a candidate to be consumed. We should have been consumed by now. The reason we are not yet consumed is because of his mercy. Can you say thank you? Can you acknowledge? We want to dance now. Before I make declarations. But it's good that you acknowledge. I don't know about you. But I know what we are doing here. We are not qualified for it. I don't know about you. And so we have every reason to thank the Lord. Every reason. This year alone, from the month of May, we have won 80,000 souls. Still counting. 80,000. No. And this is the first year of the ministry. 80,000 souls. We have seen more than 100 blind eyes or eye conditions healed. We have seen more than 100 deaf ears or ear conditions healed. We have seen growth vanish from people's bodies just like that. Growth vanish. Records over 50 of them. We've seen blood conditions stop instantly. As I'm talking to you now, two days ago, somebody just gave birth in the hospital. They had their first child eight years ago. They didn't have another. They came to see me in the hospital in February. And I said, before this year is over, you will carry your child. They just put to bed two days ago. We don't know how they are happening. We rented this place. It's not up to what we have a land. We are moving into another. No. No. God is faithful. 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 If you know how the devil came, the aggression with which the devil came for you. The other time my wife just went up. The Holy Ghost told her to go up. And she went up. She saw that the fan that was connected to the electricity was completely burnt. The whole room was in smoke. But the house will not go on fire. If the house was burnt, we would not have bought all this equipment. Because that was the time we were buying things. But God said no, 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 no. The devil came many times. But he came too late. You want to thank God? You want to acknowledge what he's done for you? Only an ungrateful person will not thank God. Who told you? How did you wake up? In Psalm 3 verse 5, the psalmist said, I slept, I woke up because God kept me. Even that you woke up today is because God was at work. Do you know where you were when you were sleeping? Do you know how many demons came for you? Do you know the wishes of men concerning you? How many men are hoping and wishing that you should be disgraced and destroyed? You think you are doing what you are doing because you are smart? Thank you, Father. We give you praise. We give you glory. We give you praise. We give you glory. Thank you, Lord. At this point, we are going to take a thanksgiving offering. Matthew 30, verse 19, he said, Out of Zion shall proceed thanksgiving. And he said, I will multiply them. They will not be few. I will glorify them. They will not be small. Because thanksgiving has erupted from here tonight. I decree over you. Become great from tonight. Become mighty from tonight. In the name of Jesus. In Acts 2 47. He said as they thank the Lord. He said daily. The Lord added to the church 
such as should be saved. In John 6, 11, it said Jesus lifted up his voice and thanked the Father and the bread began to multiply. I decree over you tonight, everything you touch is commanded to multiply. Everything you touch is commanded to multiply. From today, have more than enough. In the name of Jesus. You will not go into 2023 a beggar. You will not go into 2023 confused. You will not go into 2023 defeated. I decree over you now the multiplicative power rest upon you from this night. Even before this year is over, receive an extraordinary testimony. In the name of Jesus. He said in Acts 16.25, Paul and Silas he said they prayed and they gave thanks he said the angel of the Lord descended and shattered the foundation of the prison I decree concerning you now every force holding you in captivity every force keeping you in bondage they are shattered from their foundation they are scattered from tonight in the name of Jesus my God, somebody's story is about to change. Somebody's experience is about to be altered. Somebody is about to be lifted from the Marie clay. Somebody is about to be lifted from defeat. I decree by the power of the Holy Ghost, the hand that lifts, lifts you up now. The power that restores, restore you now. In the name of the Lord Jesus, every area of struggle is cancelled. Every area of defeat is cancelled. From tonight, arise, shine. For your light is come. The glory of the Lord is lifted upon you. I decree concerning you, step into the shining dimension of your life. Step into the reigning era of your life. Step into the victorious era of your life. In the name of Jesus. There's a power that lifts. There's a power that lifts. Every man standing is helped. It's not the best of us that succeed. He said the race is not to the swift. Neither is the battle to the strong. It's of the Lord that showeth mercy. I decree over somebody tonight. The mercy of God will rest with you. The mercy of God that distinguishes rest with you now. In the name of Jesus. Hear this. Every yoke of sickness that is reducing the quality of your existence, every yoke of infirmity, every baggage of infirmity that has reduced the quality of your existence, as you walk out of this place, you leave it behind. The Lord is telling me he's putting upon someone an excellent spirit. The excellent spirit is the spirit of leadership. Daniel had it. Joseph had it. Everyone that carried that spirit was a leader and a ruler. And so I decree over you now the power to rule. Take it in the name of Jesus. I break mediocrity from your life. In the name of Jesus. The limitations of Africa the limitations of ignorance I break them off your life in the name of Jesus arise and shine your horn is exalted now in the name of the Lord Jesus there's a limitation upon Africans they are considered second class individuals when an African meets a white man he makes himself a servant because of a wrong mindset a dwarfed mindset an erroneous mindset I decree over you from tonight rule regardless of race rule regardless of class rule regardless of pedigree by the spirit be exalted now in the name of Jesus there are many who are reduced because of the powers of the bloodline there's a limitation 
that nobody from that bloodline has crossed. I speak over you now because your life begins from the resurrection. Every utterance of the bloodline, every limitations of the bloodline, they are hereby cancelled in the name of Jesus. The Lord is asking me to tell seven persons that thing you called impossible before December 31st, you will see it. You will see it. Some of you have been here for long. You know, we don't just say these things. The word by the message of God don't fall to the ground. I decree over everyone here with the capacity to receive before December 31st, there is a turnaround for you. In the name of Jesus. The yoke of poverty is about to break from a family bloodline. From a family bloodline. Somebody is hearing me now. You have never handled a million. But hear this. By the first quarter of next year, you will not just carry one, but over 20 million. Because your status financially they have changed by the spirit it has changed by the spirit it has changed by the spirit and i speak over you now there is a covering cast over your family everyone is a star but no one is shining because of the covering cast now hear the word of the lord the light has come for you begin to shine now begin to shine now begin to shine now as you step into 2023 it's your year of celebration. Men will celebrate you. Your generation will celebrate you. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Please place your hand on your, chair, on your head. The anointing that preserves. By the grace of God, since we started, none among us, we have not received any record of anybody dying who is among our number. And so right now, on the strength of this corporate atmosphere, I decree over you, death will not take you. Amen. You will cross over. Amen. And you will cross over gloriously. Amen. I cancel every utterance of death. I cancel every program of death. I decree over you, be preserved. Be preserved. Be preserved. In the name of Jesus. Every demonic program designed to cut men off, you have escaped. You have escaped. You have escaped. Have escaped. In the name of the Lord Jesus. And I speak over you. Begin to operate in the abundant realm of life. You don't only have life. You have life to the full. Begin to operate from the abundant realm of life. In the name of Jesus. Hear this. I decree over you from this moment. The Bible said faith is now. I decree over you from this moment. Let there be a turnaround for you. Let there be a turnaround for you. In the name of Jesus. Two weeks ago, a lady came. She was being denied of a job. Signals came from the U.S. Suspend that appointment. And a declaration like this was made. In less than 24 hours, her appointment letter was sent to her email. And she was instructed to resume immediately. It doesn't take time. It takes faith. Somebody who was struggling for more than 10 years walked up to me in the office i made a declaration before he reached home he received a call that changed his life i decree over somebody the same unction the same power the same grace rest upon you now in the name of jesus everything constituting a reproach in your life right now by the anointing it is rolled away Everything constituting limitation in your life right now by the anointing it is rolled away. This is the last time they will see you like this. 
the next time they meet you, your glory will shine. The royalty dimension of your spirit is commanded to be activated in the name of Jesus. Begin to do what no one in your class has done before. He said, Daniel and his friends were ten times better than their peers. I decree the power to excel and to be distinguished and to be the standard. It rests upon you now. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord cause his face to shine upon you. The Lord lift up his countenance over you. The Lord give you peace. Your going out and your coming in is blessed. From this day, the glory of God will become the means by which you'll be identified. Because God will set you apart from his glory, for his glory. So let it be written. So let it be established. In Jesus' precious name. If you were blessed by this message you just listened to, and you wish to make Jesus your Lord and personal Savior, kindly repeat this prayer after me. Dear Heavenly Father, I believe in your Son, Jesus Christ, and that He died for my sins, and was raised from the dead for my justification. I therefore confess with my mouth, that Jesus is the Lord of my life. I receive eternal life into my spirit. I am born again. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. If you just said this prayer and you would love to be discipled by the ministry Encounter Jesus Ministry, kindly send us an email at divinitychannelTV at gmail.com. Or you can contact us at plus two three four nine zero six four seven three five three six two. God bless you and welcome to the family of God. Divinity Channel is a gospel channel that aims at aligning and bringing men into spiritual experience in the body of Christ. All videos are only for edification and educational purposes. We create videos that will change your life using the materials of some of your favorite ministers by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Our purpose is to create quality, educational, motivational videos that can be shared with our viewers. Note, we own the copyright to the footages and background sound used in all videos. Our work is original and is drastically rearranged with unique editing to bring the best from the message. Creative effects are added to highlight certain areas in the message. When there are two or more speakers, it is done in a conversational manner, meaning they complete each other's sentences while staying on the topic. Intermittent sampling is also applied. Kindly hit the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell 